Welcome to our solar electric trailer journey. This is the third and last video that we've done in a series showing you and explaining how we have installed solar panels on our A-Liner Scout pop-up trailer. And if you're interested in putting solar panels on your trailer, I suggest you go back and watch the other videos. They are very informative. Check out the newsletter because in the newsletter there will be links pointing you to, to those videos. This week we'll explain the inside the trailer components of the solar power system. This was the most difficult part of all. For every hour we spent outside working on the solar system, we spent three to five hours inside the trailer working. We relied heavily on Nate Yarborough on the YouTube channel Explorers Life for guidance. Now let's get started. As you can see, we brought the wires in from the roof inside, inside the trailer. We took them down below into the cabinet where I'm sitting on this cushion. And then we took the wires over to the cabinet where the refrigerator is and where the sink is to the other side. Devin figured out how to install the rest, so I'm going to turn the time over to him to explain the rest of the setup. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the, our project and maybe try to explain a little bit about why this has been so challenging. So uh, in the uh, trailer, you can just see here down in the cabinet where we have all the components, you can see where the wires come through uh, from the neighboring cabinet and then enter this uh, fuse box here. Now this, this breaker, uh, this circuit breaker, serves as an on-off switch for the solar. So if we want to work on the system, uh, we can switch off the solar panels right here with that uh, uh, circuit breaker. That's pretty inexpensive, but uh, a little bit tricky to find. It's the kind of thing that's easier to order than to find in a store. And that's kind of a general rule. The, the wires come into the breaker, creating an on-off switch for our solar system. And then they feed uh, next into the charge controller. And this is a Victron Energy Smart Solar MPPT 120 controller. And this is one of the least expensive options from Victron for a charge controller. And it's adequate for our little system. From there, uh, the wires run around our fuse box over to connect into uh, the bus bars. So we've got a negative wire coming from the charge controller and a positive wire coming from the, from the charge controller going over to these bus bars. These bus bars, think of that as an extension of the battery. Nate suggested we use this very fancy bus bar system that has uh, some fuses on it, which enables us to protect the wires in the system from overheating. So far, the system is now uh, up and running nicely. So from the bus bar, uh, the wires go to the battery. Between the battery and the bus bar, we've inserted this switch that again allows us to turn the battery off and disconnect it from the rest of the system. So we can disconnect power from the solar panels, we can disconnect power from the battery, and then um, of course, we can unplug from shore power and we can turn off the in, uh, charger inverter. So we've got lots of, we've got lots of options for uh, terminating power to work on the system. So the, the, the cables for the, uh, for the battery run over there and then uh, come over into this other cabinet here. And so we've got the, uh, the big battery here and, and Oftentimes, uh, RVers are using big battery systems or sat battery banks. We opted instead for a one big battery. I don't know the pros and cons of each. I simply thought it was going to be easier to buy one big battery than several smaller ones. So it's got 2.5 kilowatt hours of, of storage uh, in that battery. So it's a pretty good sized battery. Let's talk about this little shunt here. Um, 
this little shunt connects to it's there only to insert a battery monitor it measures the state of condition of the battery and it has a little output screen that we've installed here in the cabinet uh, next to the refrigerator and right by the sink this is kind of right under the sink so you can see that at the moment the battery has 36 percent and we're using 460 ish watts that's fluctuating primarily because the sun is fluctuating and so a cloud is disappearing now and so we're using net less energy uh, because a cloud just moved away and now we're getting the full benefit of solar and our solar panels theoretically are 500 watt panels they are in fact generating haven't seen it go over 300 yet uh, now panels will do better in cooler weather among these cables are cables that run the bus bar here to the Victron Energy inverter charge controller. And this is the most expensive uh, piece. In, in some ways, this is the linchpin piece of the, of the system because it, it converts all the power from the battery into 110 or 120 volt alternating current so that it can be used by the air conditioner and the refrigerator. It also allows us to draw power from shore power so that the shore power cables no longer go directly into the fuse box. The power from the inverter charge controller goes over to this fuse box here. And I'll show you the front panel of the, of the, char of the fuse box. And it's a pretty conventional looking fuse box. So you've got the AC breakers here that connect for the air conditioner and the outlets. And, and around the little tiny trailer, we've got, I think, uh, three different pairs of outlets to charge things like our laptops in and charge those. And there's also uh, an inverter in the fuse box that converts the AC power that it anticipates we get from shore power, which now also comes from the inverter and into DC power that runs things like the lights. But there aren't many things in our trailer that run from that. We still have an outlet for shore power. You can see the cable running outside. I've just got the cable laying on the ground to make room for us to see kind of what's going on in here because that cord piles up in here. That shore power then it runs through the charge controller, this big inverter charge controller and charges the battery when we're connected to shore power. Now we can be plugged in and have solar going and the, the battery can absorb all of that. So that's our system. We spent a lot of time putting it together, organizing it uh, to make this work. We're uh, excited to kind of show you what we did. We now have a functioning solar power system. As we shoot this video, we are in the trailer and the trailer is operating off of solar and battery power. And the battery power is from solar. We left the trailer out in the sun all morning. We're using more power than the solar is generating, as we showed you, but the power we're drying off the battery is power that we put on there with solar panels. We'll be camping next week uh, to test it out. So we'll be uh, looking forward to sharing more reports with you in the coming weeks and months. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you found this useful. When we heard our Rivian wouldn't be delivered until Christmas of 2023, we decided to see what we could tow with our Chevy Bolt. Launching our solar electric trailer journey. We have a lot to learn and we're sharing what we discover along the way. We've added solar panels to our A-Liner Scout pop-up trailer preparing us for doing the same on a bigger trailer when the Rivian arrives. Join us by subscribing now.